Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Stranger Than Fiction, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, change is my stock and trade. If life's twisting you like a tornado and you want out, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, writing this letter is a hideous necessity. But a rival has come into my life, or I should say, this woman has come back into my life. And in such a way as to cause me the kind of humiliation I will not tolerate. You may have read my husband's best-selling novel, The Awakening. Everyone else seemed to have. Well, I must know whether this particular woman is or is not the heroine of this This tale tale of passion. passion. This should be an easy enough assignment for you. Please call me at my home so we can arrange an immediate appointment at your office. Sincerely, Victoria Beasley. Hmm. Now, Brooksy, that's what I call a world-shaking problem. Well, you wouldn't make so light of it, my lad, if you'd read Samuel Beasley's book. It was banned in Boston. Oh. One critic called it an emotional hot foot, 700 pages <laughs> long. Well, I must get to this cultural milestone as soon as I've finished the Rover Boys in the Indian country. Right now, I'm going to call Mrs. Beasley. <laughs> Okay, Mrs. Beasley, I'll just sit here and wait until you stop prancing up and down. Mr. Valentine, you don't seem to appreciate the position my husband's placed me in with this this book. Here, Mrs. Beasley, have a chair. Nobody's made you look ridiculous. Friends don't snicker and whisper behind their hands every time you pass. Look, please, So you can sit there with that superior smirk on your face. Well, if I'm smirking, it's because I'm trying not to laugh out loud. I didn't come here to... With someone like you, Mrs. B, I've got to say what I mean to make a dent. Oh, Brooksy, you read the society columns. Oh, sure. A girl's got to be improving her staff warfare, you know. All right. Now, how is Victoria Beasley usually described? Uh, this time, without the routine. Really, now, Mr. Valentine. Well, without the routine. Victoria Beasley, glacial beauty, wondrous wit, soul of poise. Please. Evoked an almost audible gasp of admiration when she arrived at the Duchess's party, late as usual. I'm leaving. Now, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Won't you admit this does call for a laugh? A woman with all those assets getting green-eyed over a fictional gal her husband dreamt up in a novel? Sam is a broker, not a writer. Oh, say that about Samuel Beasley on a quiz program and the man will come up with, ah, too bad, better luck next time. I cured him of all his literary pretensions ten years ago when he married me. Lord knows where he found time to write this book. He did it out of sheer malice. You mean you thought you had a colorless milk toast character for a spouse and now he's the pop of a bestseller, stealing all the limelight from you. No. That's not it at all. Then what is it? The Diana in Sam's book actually exists. Everything that happened between her and the hero actually happened. Almost every critic said it has the ring of truth. Oh, well, that doesn't mean that never... The whole situation. A community like our own, Deer Lake Park. The description of Diana. The cold, distant wife who didn't know what was going on. Mm, the glacial beauty, huh? You sound as though you knew the heroine. I think I do. And that's where I need your help, Mr. Valentine. Well, look, haven't I tried to explain... So many things are so very clear now. For instance, every Thursday for the last year, Sam's received a telephone call at 5.30. He's always made a point of answering it himself. Well, does it have to be another woman? It could have been his bookie. They're very punctual, too. Once I reached the phone before he did, the party hung up. I'm sure it was a woman. The woman. You recognize the perfume, no doubt. Let me finish. Every Thursday night, he's made an excuse to go into town and never once mentioned what he did. Well, of course, you keep Sam informed of all your movements. That's aside from the point. Your commentary doesn't interest me. I just want you to find out if Diana in Sam's book is or isn't Peggy Wilkinson. And who's that lady? Her family has the estate next to ours at Deer Lake Park. She's always loved Sam. Probably would have married him if I hadn't come along. You mean except for the last year, Peggy's been content to forget, if not forget. Peggy's the kind of girl who's willing to wait things out. She makes a career of being naive, wholesome, and athletic... And you think she's the Diana in The Awakening? You may have seen Miss Wilkinson in the Sunday supplements. She's always carrying not one, but six tennis rackets. Say, tell me, Mrs. Beasley, what's it going to do for your pride to find out if all this is true? Or is it a little feminine mayhem you have in mind? What I have in mind is none of your business. Question is, are you interested in a flat fee? Oh, excuse me, William. Valentine. Oh, yeah, Riley. Oh, what's on your mind, Lieutenant? What? Hey, look, start from the beginning, will you? And this time, stop for the red lights. Huh? huh? Oh, now, wait, I can't answer that. 
Looks like I'm going to take the case, or I might be violating the confidence of my client. Okay, stop yelling, will you? We'll be right out there. Mrs. Beasley? Yes? Do you know a man named Michael Waldron? I do. And you left my telephone number in case he wanted to get in touch with you? That's right. We were supposed to have lunch in town together today. How do you know? Who was that on the phone? Lieutenant Riley. Homicide. What's the tie-up, George? Well, what did he say? Enough to take this out of the class of a family brawl. Mrs. Beasley, somebody tried to kill your husband. Well, while we're waiting for Miss Brooks to get here with Miss Wilkinson, what about some drinks? Oh, Sally. Yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. Uh, just a minute here. Uh, yes, Lieutenant? Mrs. Beasley, suppose we forget about the social graces until we get rid of the business at hand, huh? The business being to prove I took a pot shot at Beasley here. Take it easy, Walton. Hey, Lieutenant, Mr. Beasley's been strangely quiet. Would you mind him telling us what happened? Oh, that's going to be just dandy. He'd like nothing better than a pin it on me. Michael, please. Let's face it, Vicky. He resented every moment we've been together. Why should I, Walden? You're five years younger than my wife. Our friends applaud her choice for a companion when I'm occupied. You're handsome, very charming. Okay, and... okay, okay. You guys can knife each other some other time. Are you sure nobody wants anything? What, are you still here? I told you that... No... Uh, no, Sally. Uh, nobody wants anything. I was talking to Mr. Beasley. You can go now, Sally. Just as you say, Mr. Beasley. Mr. Valentine, a moment ago you asked me for my version of what happened here in my study. Yeah, it seems to have been lost in the shuffle. I can be very brief about it. I was sitting there at my desk, typing, doing some work on a new story. Suddenly there was a shot through those French doors. I didn't see anybody, and I assure you I didn't stop to investigate. I get it. I made a beeline for the drawing room. And strangely enough, a minute later... In walked Waldron. Here we go. Let me ask you something, Beasley. I'll ask the questions if you don't mind, Valentine. And when I'm through, I've got something to ask you. Why you're mixed up in this at all, I... Uh, uh, Mrs. Beasley. I don't think I can be of much help, Lieutenant. When I left for Mr. Valentine's office, Sam was here in the study. I decided I wouldn't bother him. Didn't you even tiptoe up and peek in to say goodbye? I told you. He was working. I could hear him at the typewriter. As far as I'm concerned, I was merely dropping by to pick Vicky up for lunch. I didn't even hear a shot. <laughs> of course, it might have been one of my readers expressing a critical opinion. Please, Mr. Beasley, don't try to be funny. You know, you people rank pretty high socially in our fair city. That's why I'm here. Ordinarily, you'd have to be a corpse before I arrive. Just one minute, Mrs. Beasley. I'll take that. I, I, what do you mean? Whatever it is, you're trying to slip into your pocketbook. I'd like to see it. You haven't anything to hide... Have you, Mrs. Beasley? Why, no. This is just a... A gold cigarette lighter. Yes. I must have dropped it over there by the doors. Mm. I... Very interesting. Initials M.W. Uh, Lieutenant, you needn't look at me like that. It's not mine. Well, well, we'll see about that, M.W. And you weren't supposed to have been here in the study. Michael. Uh, that's all right, Vicky. They can think whatever they want, but they'll never prove anything. I'm sure that's a world of consolation to my wife. Isn't it, my dear? Well, suppose we go uh, back downtown together, Waldron. While we check on this lighter, you and I have a few things to talk about. Why not? Oh, Lieutenant. Yeah? I admit this lighter might point very definitely to Waldron, but it doesn't stop there. All right, all right. Where does it stop? I'll be able to tell you better when Brooksy gets here. Now, Miss Wilkinson, as I told you, there's no reason to be nervous. The lieutenant has to ask these questions. But I don't understand. I knew nothing of what happened to Sam until Miss Brooks told me. Oh, but I didn't tell you, Miss Wilkinson. I made it a point not to. I... Well, I, I couldn't help guessing something was wrong. Lieutenant, must we drag Peggy into this? You've got Waldron in the other room to take down to headquarters. Why this inquisition? Valentine and your wife dragged this young woman into this mess, not me. Surely, Sam, you can't object to us doing everything we can to find out who tried to kill you. Your concern for me is very touching, Victoria. Uh, uh, Mr. Beasley, whether you know it or not, your wife has a theory that the heroine of your book is modeled after Miss Wilkinson. Mr. Valentine, that was supposed to be a matter of confidence between us. Attempted murder changes all that. Victoria, you really believe that? Me, the Diana in The Awakening, that irresistible creature who unleashed such raging passion in a man? Sam was so carried away, he couldn't help dropping some unmistakable clues. How long has this been going on? Just the last year? Or the whole time we've been married? Now, Victoria. How many people have known it all along? 
laughing at me. Oh, this is ridiculous. Peggy is the last person anybody would picture as the femme fatale. She's the outdoor type. Much too wholesome for that sort of thing. Just, just to look at her, anybody can tell that. Well, why stop there, Sam? You with your marvelous knack with words. Why don't you say I'm just about as glamorous as a dish of cottage cheese? I use Life Boy in my tub instead of perfume bath salts. The direct opposite of the striking and glamorous Victoria. Uh, just where were you all morning, Miss Wilkinson? I had no airtight alibi, if that's what you mean. I was out horseback riding, all by myself. Ah, oh, look, look, let's stop uh, sparring, huh? Now, look, Valentine, you said you were going to pull some kind of rabbit out of the hat. Well, come on, come on, let's have it. Okay, do you happen to own a cigarette lighter, Margaret? I, well, yes. I didn't know there was any law against that. Could this be it? The initials M.W. could stand for Margaret Wilkinson, as well as Michael Walton. Now, while you were out horseback riding, you might have taken a slight detour. And you might have wanted to kill Beasley because he wouldn't get a divorce and marry you. Well, Miss Wilkinson? Very well. Why shouldn't I admit it? It's all true about this morning. And the book. Well, you know what you're saying, about Peggy. That. Yes, and I don't care. Oh, this will really cause a sensation. The wholesome, colorless Peggy Wilkinson turns out to be the fabulous and much-discussed Diana. Oh, and I'll love it. You heard her, all of you. This twee little thump has been making a fool of me. Me. Well, Miss Wilkinson, I guess we'd better get into town. I'm afraid not, Lieutenant Riley. Huh? Because I'm not going to press charges. What? Yes, George, did you hear the man? Yeah. I came here to make an arrest, and that's what I'm going to do. I refuse to prosecute. As far as I'm concerned, Peggy was out hunting squirrels, and her marksmanship was incredibly bad. I think you're right, Sam, but I don't. I want the world to know that you couldn't hold a man, Victoria. <laughs> and of all things, you lost him to me. I think that washes everything up, Lieutenant. Thank you very much for your trouble. If you were anybody else, Beasley, I'd... I, I, I... <sighs> I'd better get out of here before I lose my... Peggy, I'd better take you home. Oh, yes, sir. Victoria, you'd better go and reassure Waldron that he's a free man. I'll do that, Sam. I'll be right back, Mr. Valentine. Yeah. Well, where does that leave us, George? <laughs> I don't see any point in hanging around now. Oh, a very important point, Brooksy. A particularly fat and juicy bill. Oh. Not what she wanted to know. So, sit down at the great author's typewriter and make it out. Okay. What amount shall I make it, George? Oh, I... I beg your pardon. I, I was looking for Mrs. Beasley. Uh, this is my day off. I, I was just leaving. Mm -hmm. Well, so long, Sally. I, uh... I, I was in the next room before. I couldn't help overhearing Mrs. Beasley say Mr. Beasley was using the typewriter when she left this morning. So? Uh... The reason the typewriter man was here was to bring this this new machine. Goodbye, Mr. Valentine. George. Yeah, Brooksy. This is a noiseless machine. Then she couldn't have heard it. With the doors of the study closed. Now, why did she lie? You mean Victoria took a shot at her husband and then came to us? Oh, but why would Peggy... I don't know, Angel, I don't know. But unless I have the proud Victoria sized up all wrong, the lady is still out to do murder. Return to tonight's adventure, George Valentine, in just a moment. You like your car. Probably everybody in your family and most of your friends like it. But there's someone who doesn't like your car. And his name is Old Man Rust. He's most destructive when your car is standing idle for long hours. He sneaks in with condensed moisture and starts nibbling at internal engine parts the moment you cut the ignition. But if you've got RPM motor oil in your car, don't you worry. So when you cut the engine, RPM doesn't drain off vertical parts. It stays on the job and prevents rust from ever getting started. Other compounds in RPM, motor oil, prevent gummy carbon and lacquer formations, put a stop to corrosion and oxidation. It adds up to complete protection, another reason why RPM is first choice in the West. Ask for RPM at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations, where they say, and mean... We take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. 
a marble cold society beauty, Victoria Beasley, by name, who'd rather die than be humiliated, hires you to prove that the heroine in her broker husband's sensational first book is a former sweetheart of his, Peggy Wilkinson. You don't want any part of a divorce-bound shuffle like this, but then an attempt is made on Sam Beasley's life. Said Peggy takes the blame, and the wife trips herself up with a stupid, needless contradiction, which seems to give the lie to Peggy's confession, all of which sends you, George Valentine, into frantic action to prevent another try at murder. George, what are you going to do? Find Victoria. Okay, Walden, where is she? That's what I'd like to know, Valentine. What did you say to Victoria? She just brushed past me, told me to stay here until she got something cleared up once and for all. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Well, wasn't Mrs. Beasley more specific? Where was she going? What was she going to do? That's all she said. But you've got to stop hounding her, Valentine. Me? Hounding her? You're a little mixed up, Mr. Waldron. Victoria came to us. Well, there's no time to go into detail. Why don't you admit it? Her husband hired you to spy on us. You can't do that to the kind of person Victoria is. She's easily upset. And I'm not going to let you. Now, look, Buster, I got places to go in a hurry. You're not going anywhere. You're going to leave Victoria alone. You're a big, well-built lad, Waldron, but don't try to maul me. You're staying right here, even if I have to. Sorry, but you forced me into this corner, pal. I told you I got places to go. Don't keep looking around like that for help, Peggy. I waited till Sam left so I could be alone with you. I'm here to kill you in your own house. Victoria, put that gun away. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, yes, I do. In the presence of others, you admitted that you came between me and my husband. It was you who were phoning every Thursday at 5.30. The other details are all there for the whole world to read. In Sam's book. No, Victoria, no. No jury will convict me for trying to protect the sanctity of the American home. Now, listen to me, Victoria. Yeah, being I... a laughingstock, I'll be a heroine, a noble figure. That's something I never could stand for, being laughed at. I'm willing to do anything to put an end to that. You've got to believe me. I lied to that, Lieutenant. I didn't try to kill Sam, and I'm not the Diana in his book. You expect me to believe that? Well, I said it only because I'm human. I'm tired of being the dowdy thing that I am. Can't you understand what it would mean if people thought that I had all the glamour that you have and more? I haven't been waiting around for ten years to get Sam. Sorry, Peggy. I'm all through talking. I'm sorry about this. Oh, oh, oh did Why, you... She... She was going to kill me. It's all right now, Peggy. Your wrist will hurt for a couple of days, Mrs. Beasley. But you're lucky to get away this easy. Well, I get on my knees and thank you most humbly. No. No, and you better not bother picking up that gun either. I'll just take that. Where did you get it anyway? It's Sam. I took it from the drawer in his shipper over. I see. Okay, come on, Mrs. Beasley. You too, Miss Wilkinson. Where are we going? Right back where we started. Who knows? If I'm lucky, I may come up with another rabbit out of the hat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't like hogging the floor, but the time has come when you're going to have to do the listening. Well, get it over with, Mr. Valentine. I'm sick of this whole thing. I'm sure the ladies, too, are anxious to hear what you have to say. Well, you should be more than anxious, Mrs. Beasley. You should be shaking with fear over what you might have done today. You mean committing murder? I had every intention to. Tori, you can't go on feeling that way about me. I told you you're all wrong. Stop sniveling, Peggy. You're safe. I doubt if I could work myself up to the same fever pitch again. Oh, now you're just being an old softy, Mrs. Beasley. What I meant to say is that if Miss Wilkinson is right, you would have killed the wrong woman and paid for it with your life. I'm just as sure as ever that she's the Diana Sam wrote about. And about that attempt on your life, Mr. Beasley. Oh, yes, we mustn't forget that. If Miss Wilkinson has recanted her confession and Waldron here is staunch in his denials... I certainly am. That leaves... only you, Mrs. Beasley. Oh, you placed much too much importance on my hearing Sam's typewriter... I only said that to make my story sound more convincing. I didn't want to be implicated in something I had nothing to do with. Well, it seems we're right back where we started from, with a full-blown mystery on our hands. Maybe it would be best just to forget. I don't know about that. I... Stay where you are, Victoria. No, I'll answer that, Mr. Beasley. Oh, yes, but I... 5.30. Thursday. Same call, same time. Every week. Yeah. The other woman. Hello? Is that you, Sam? No. No, but I've got a question for you, lady. Oh. oh, dear Lord, what I almost did. Yes, Mrs. Beasley. There is a real-life Diana, and that was she on the phone. Okay. okay, who is she, Beasley? If a writer learns nothing else, he learns the value of confounding and bewildering the reader. That's the way I choose to leave it now. Oh, Peggy, I couldn't help believing what I did. 
And if Mr. Valentine hadn't oh, Brooks, stopped me, I would... Yes, George. Oh. Get on the phone and tell Riley to get back here. Oh, he's going to just love that. Well, it's only right that he should be in on the payoff. Same rabbit in the same hat? No, nope. no. Nope. You've heard about how those long-eared critters increase and multiply. Well, at this point, there's a whole slew of the little beasties. Huh? In other words, Angel, now we've got all the answers. Right, all right, Valentine. I get the picture of what happened between Mrs. Beasley and Miss Wilkins. But I told Valentine. you, Lieutenant, I'm not going to do anything about it. Wait a minute. Certainly under the circumstances, I'm not going to do anything about it. Oh, 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 most certainly. There have been two murder attempts, and we're supposed to just laugh it off, huh? Lieutenant, do I still have to hang around here? As far as I'm concerned, you can drop... Surely, Waldron, you don't want to miss the exciting explanation Valentine promises. Yes, why don't you say something, Mr. Valentine? What have you got on your mind? I don't think you can stall much longer, darling. Okay. Okay, I admit I have been stalling. But for a very good reason. Still, if the time has come. Beasley. Hmm? You staged this whole business. Nobody tried to kill you. What? You fired that shot through the French doors. You're going to have trouble proving an obvious absurdity like that. Okay, if someone really wanted to kill you, some person in this room who knew you, he would have walked right up to you and let you have it. Not resort to any hit or miss tactics. Mm. That makes sense, Valentine. Go on. The gun your wife wanted to use on Miss Wilkinson, your gun, has one bullet missing from it. And that's the bullet embedded in the wall over your desk. Are you sure of that? Quite sure, Lieutenant. Mr. Beasley was so convinced that suspicion would never fall on him, he was, well, let's say, careless enough to put the gun back in his room where his wife found it. Why would Sam do such a thing? I'll tell you why. He'd make the headlines more publicity for that book of his. Yes, dear, that thought did occur to me. The sensation the awakening caused was beginning to die down. Something like this would have started people talking all over again. Make me seem even more ridiculous. It was fit payment for the ten years you lorded it over me. Making me a laughingstock among our friends. And I was to be the patsy in the deal. I've been waiting for this beastly, and now it's a good point, Buster. And the lighter, Sam? Were you going to purposely implicate me? No, Peggy. I never thought of you as Margaret when I planted that lighter with the initials M.W. I wanted it to point to Waldron. But I never intended to press charges. Oh, there must be something in the books that applies to a case like this. There's got to be. And I'm going to find it. Look, Beasley, I don't care how big uh, a man you are. Lieutenant, huh? you haven't heard the whole story. I don't think I can take any more. Oh, you don't know about rabbits, Lieutenant, and how they increase and multiply. Miss Brooks, there's an awful lot of things I don't know, but I'm going to find out right now. Oh, Mrs. Beasley, I, I didn't know you had company. What, Shelley? I uh, just wanted to tell you I, I was back in case you needed me. But, Shelley... This is your night off. I'm sure she'll give you a detailed report some other time, but now... Lieutenant Riley, you should be ashamed of yourself. What's that? That's no way to talk about the almost legendary Diana. You know what you're talking about. You must be out of your mind. I was trying to stall till Sally got here. But how did he find out, Mr. Beasley? I'm sure he's coming to that right now, Sally. You mean my own maid in my own house? Yes, Mrs. Beasley. Those mysterious phone calls every Thursday. Thursday. (laughs) The traditional maid's day off. (laughs) Sam couldn't keep his appointment tonight. I can't help myself, Victoria, but it is funny. (laughs) But not to me, Michael. You can get out and stay out. Victoria, I'm truly very sorry. Of course. You began tying things up, George, when Sally made those pointed remarks about the new typewriter. Frankly, I'm glad it's all out in the open. Uh, yeah, me too. Victoria, although this must necessarily add to your humiliation, after our divorce, Sally and I are going to be married. Oh, but... That's impossible. What? What do you mean, impossible, Sally? Well, I'm already married. But Joe's been in San Quentin for the last two years. Oh, this is wonderful. And this time, Michael, I can laugh with you. (laughs) Sam, I'm very sorry. You look so hurt. Sally, you... You might have told me instead of making such a fool of me. But, Mr. Beasley, we just went to the movies and and dinner every Thursday night. Oh, Oh, brother. And after all... It isn't every girl who has such a beautiful book written about her. Oh, I don't know, Riley. I think the whole thing's pretty understandable. Oh, don't you even talk to me about the business. But the press middle-aged man turns an innocent little affair into a literary heat wave. The book Victoria kept him from writing for ten years. Yeah. (laughs) 
This seems to be the night for laughing jacks. <laughs> what goes with you, pal? Well, Sam's book should have an aftermath. The awakening is complete. How come? Well, I'm betting Victoria is going to feel sorry for her spouse now. And after ten years, they're really going to get together. Yeah. Who cares? Well, that's the beautiful part about marriage, Riley. It really can take a beating and still survive. Oh, you're so right, darling. More people ought to try it. Or am I being too subtle again? Oh. Well, uh, well what I really meant, Angel, was that, uh, <laughs> well, you see, uh... <laughs> Go on. Squirm, pal. Squirm. <laughs> For the first time today, I found something to laugh at. <laughs> if you want to be off to a good start, a fast start, every time you use your car, just make sure it's Chevron Supreme gasoline you've got in the tank. This premium quality gasoline turns the engine over the moment you press the starter. Gives your car faster warm-up, too. More pep in traffic. A new ping-free power that lifts your car over the hills. Try Chevron Supreme, and you'll agree it gets the best out of your car. Another thing, it's climate-tailored. In each different temperature and altitude zone of the West, count on Chevron Supreme for your car's best performance the year round. For today's high-compression engines, you just can't buy a better gasoline. So why not try it tomorrow? Get Chevron Supreme at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Next week, as George Valentine is poking through the tall grass in a vacant lot, we'll hear him saying to Brooksy... Looks like we walked into something, Brooksy. What? That looks like part of a man's shirt. The collar of a man's shirt, with blood on it. Golly. Stephen must have torn the collar off so he could cover the wound. And the shirt came from Jonathan's. That's the shop where they look down their noses if your bill runs under $200. Then we better work faster. Yeah. Right? Because young Steve's life is worth under two cents. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Lee Patrick as Victoria, Frank Martin as Sam, Peter Leeds as Waldron, Mary Ship as Peggy, and Bernice Barrett as Sally. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.